Warding. Zero style is known to cause gas or gear acquisition syndrome. Prolonged exposure to this flood may cause you to buy knives, flashlights, pouches, patches, pocket trash, keyboards and other EDC junk you may or may not need. UV been warned. Expect us. Welcome to Zero Style. I am your host, Zero, the cyberspace hero, here this week with a thematic 90s style EDC carry for you. We got blazing neon colors, handheld video games, and the movie Hackers. Let's just dive right in. In my right cargo pocket, I've got this, the ZF Cup Size B, the Zero Feud Compact Utility Pouch. This is the smaller size one. Very nice heavy duty light blue nylon, full web field on the back. Only two patches on the pouch this week. We've got this nice super sized sky pager from Casa de Legmo Design. Hack the planet with Kate Libby. Woo! And my own Zero Miami colorway pouch bomb ranger eye vandal eye patch. On the back side, I carry two cards. It's normally my ID and my debit card. Uh, we got the Blockbuster card in here today. This pouch zippers all the way around and opens up clamshell so you can see the gear that you got in there. But lately, I've really just been unzipping the top part and then just grabbing what I need out in the front. Just unzipping the front and pulling out exactly what I need. I live that lanyard life, so it's really easy. From Roy Vivan, the A4 Pro in titanium with the Sacred Terror Skull that's been Zer blasted in titanium as well by Plague and Justin Coke. This is a nice USB-C rechargeable flashlight that is, goes up to 600 lumens in turbo mode. Just hold the button down, you go straight into turbo, double tap it, and it goes into high, medium, low brightness and steps between them. Wow, that's, that's really bright. Here in the front, you can see a sort of orange peel finish around the emitter. That makes this light just a little bit floodier by it bouncing around on all of those little orange peely surfaces. This is a great EDC flashlight. It lasts me about a month on charges. When you do turbo all of the time, which is pretty much all I use, just hold the button, see what I need to see, and let go, and I'm done with the flashlight. Hard to show it from the top view how I normally see it on camera, but there's a little split divider right here in the front, and then a bigger pocket on the back. Back, I just take the front of the Aurora and slide it right in there. The other thing I've got in this pouch is my new custom Spyderco McBee. This beautiful gal has been custom anodized by OEG EDC. It should be no secret that the Spyderco McBee is my all time favorite knife. For EDC use, this thing is just the right size. Fits in a fifth pocket or inside of a pouch, super easy. Put a big chunky lanyard bead on the back and you easily get a four finger grip on this knife. And it is just the perfect blade shape. I really dig Warncliffe, I guess. It's really easy to sharpen because the line is so straight across the bottom. You've got a nice spot for your finger up on the top. If you're doing cuts like this, or craft knife type work, utility cuts. These beautiful scales were anodized here in Pennsylvania by Titanium Finishing Company. I first saw this style anodizing in the Scoopy Loops OEG EDC collab. It was pretty similar to the way my Keystone looked before, because it doesn't look like that now, and I sent a message to Eddie and I said, hey, if I sent you my McBee scales, would you make me a custom to match your Keystone bead? And he said, send it to my wife. She works at Titanium Finishing Company. She'll give you a quote on what it will cost. I asked to get the two scales of my McBee and then the Keystone bead that her husband made. I don't know if I got a deal because I, she was hooking me up because I was supporting her husband's business or if it's just such an amazing price, but 60 bucks was what it cost to get this magical anodizing finish on both the Keystone bead and both McBee scales. Man, does this thing just look so radical. As far as the 90s aesthetic goes, I feel like Neon Gradient Splash just sums that up perfectly. And man, men just knocked this thing out of the park. I asked her before I made this video, do you do custom work? And she said, absolutely. We do a lot of boring, like t coding tons of parts for big businesses all the time. This type of work is fun and exciting for her. She gets to be creative and do something different. So if you're interested in getting some custom titanium anodizing done on anything, a knife, any kind of titanium, 
hit up Titanium Finishing Company. The link is in the description of this video. Send them an email, they'll get you a quote back real soon. Tell them Zero Style sent you. I love supporting both local businesses and small businesses. It's a two-in-one for me with this being a Pennsylvania company and the work just speaks for itself. Just amazing, wild, dynamic, in the light anodizing on both the keystone bead and the scales of this McBee. I don't know if this is my favorite McBee or not, because I got two of them now. Two customs. This one is from McNeese Knives. The knife designer himself proper did, he calls this the Bee Mascus. Kind of looks like bark anodizing on the outside in green, my favorite color. This though, I really, really love the way the anodizing looks, and this keystone just fits so good in the hand as well, too. The thing I miss from the McNeese Knives Custom is the jimping that's been added here on the front. It's pretty easy to front flick this guy. This one, on the other hand, it's much more challenging to actually get it open. You got two handed. So, am I gonna get some jimping modded on the front of this? Maybe, I don't know. I definitely love this knife though. The Spyderco McBee, my all time favorite in the pouch. I just slide this right here in the back and that's that. Here when we're looking in the top, one bead is squarey, one is round. I can tell my knife versus my flashlight on feel alone. So I love pouching. I think it's a great way to organize the gear so they don't clang around in here. They're separated by multiple layers of fabric and organized by the little dividers in there. Fits great right in your cargo pocket and you're good to go. Now, in my other cargo pocket on the right side, we've got a little pouch from Rover EDC over on Etsy. This has web field that goes all the way around it and then a zipper part on the top with a pretty, pretty big amount of stuff on the top. I got a few Ranger eyes on here from Data Crew, the blue pocket peak reaper, the Prince of Bel Air color scheme jaw from Inkpot Artworks, and then a pair of new guys here from Phi Tonics, the end and I assume the beginning. Beautiful aesthetic vapor wave looks on these patches. And in the inside, can you guess the pocket trash we've got in here? Yeah, you should from Pixel Company. This is the Alt-F, Mechanical Keyboard Switch Fidget Toy. We've got two different MX keyboard switches in here with a couple of artisan keycaps on the top in a single unibody piece of milled titanium with the sweet little Pixel Company P-Block lasering right there on the front. I really really love this thing. I mean, I type for a living, so I, my fingers are, are going like this a lot. So when I'm not at work, I kind of miss it. I know that kind of might sound weird, but it's the truth. I do this thing a lot left-handed, to be honest with you. I like to put it between my thumb and my ring finger and then let my index and my middle finger just click away on this guy, just like this. Because of that, you have to decide, do you want to put the P-block on the front or the back? When it's in your hand like this, it's on the back. When you're looking at it and taking photos, it's on the front. Your decision how you want to rock it. What's cool about this thing, besides just being an awesome little fidget toy, is that there is a whole world of both mechanical keyboard switches and artisan and non-artisan fancy keycaps to put on the top of this to make it exactly the way you want it to be. You want it loud, you want it quiet, you want it clicky, you want it tactile, you want it smooth as butter. You just change the switch in there. Check out this video that I did of the unboxing. I changed the switches, played around with a bunch of keycaps, Showed you around at the beautiful milling and stuff on this piece, all around the edges, just the chamfering, it just so good. Everything about this is super duper nice. Now I'd be remiss if I didn't say this is a V3 prototype. This is not the final version that Pixel Company wants to ship, but I got in on the V3 drop, just like everybody else who typed in on that thread and got in on the lotto and I was able to purchase one of these. This thing is just so cool and so satisfying. And look at that Zerblast finish. It just shimmers in the light. And now that I got them all smudged up, on the keycap game here from Ramaworks, this is the GMK Vaporwave X. It's got like a blue and purple anodizing on it. Super cool. 
And then from Sludge Kid, we've got the Flamey Boy in blue. I don't know if the light's gonna let you see it or not, but there is a super cool skull embedded in all of that glittery goo goodness. Just a cool pair of matching artisan keycaps to fidget with on the Alt-F mechanical keyboard fidget toy. Now, it doesn't fit in the ZF cup, so I have it in a separate pouch. This is the smallest pouch that I have that it fits in, and it's probably double the size that it needs to be for this thing. Probably gonna have to find something new to carry this in, but I wanted to protect it in case the keycaps might fall off in my pocket. You don't want a nice piece like this to get messed up, just beating around in your pocket. So, dual pouching. Also in the left pocket, I've got my Hank. This week we've got a Hank from Damn Hanks, another totally radical 90s print Hank. This is microfiber backed here with dark blue, like navy blue, and then a lighter blue embroidering around the edges. Super nice stitching and just a cool 90s aesthetic. Hanks are great for cleaning off screens, lenses, pocket trash, knives, whatever you have that might get a little dirty, clean it off with a hank. I also use these things for snot, both on myself and my children. I often carry two hanks, I'm not gonna show you the second one that's in there because it's disgusting, but I often carry two hanks, one to clean stuff and then one to clean people. So hanks, always keep at least one in your pocket. Now while not on me, but still with me, I've got the larger ZF Cup size A pouch. A little size comparison here, this is the one that's in my cargo pocket, the size B, the smaller one that's about credit card size, and then this is the size A, the beefy big brother version, both in the same blue nylon on the exterior, for that aesthetic matchy matchy, you know how I roll. Though this one looks a lot dirtier, for I'm just being thrown about, it's not on my persons, it's with me, whether it's in my bag, on a table, or whatever. I recently just customized this with a little zipper pull from Mimi Maru or something. It's, it's linked in the description. It's an Essie seller. It's very malleable. It's not PVC. It is food safe. But my God, the hole on the bottom was so tiny. I barely could fit two strands of micro cord in there. So for now, I just wrapped it around the zipper pull. I'm going to have to come up with a better style for that. But it works good, and it definitely fits this Nintendo theme for this thing. Because I have got all four of the Smash Brothers gear Future Relic Knives collab Weirdo Wario patches. We got the original Triple I colorway, the zombie blue X'd out poison version, the zombie blue Triple I one up, and then that rubber hose black and white X'd out poison weirdo Wario to fit this whole Nintendo video game aesthetic because I have this pouch suited out with just one thing in mind. This is the Ambernick RG35 XX. This is a pocket portable video game console. It's got four shoulders on the back, rechargeable USB-C here on the bottom, a headphone jack, HDMI mini out to television. We've got four face buttons, start and select, a menu button for the console, and then a pretty, pretty nice D-pad. This device is made by a company called Ambernick. They have made a ton of video game consoles throughout the years. There's a lot of good and bad in their history, and this device is awesome. I have had no complaints with this thing whatsoever. Maybe missing a feature here or there, but you can actually hack this thing and install custom firmware called Garlic OS, which I'm going to be doing in an upcoming video. But for now, we're just looking at the stock version of this operating system. So from this main menu, you've got your list of all consoles, your favorites, recently played, searching, and then the settings for the device. So if we go here into all consoles, we've got PS1, arcade games, we've got Neo Geo, different kinds of arcade games as well, Game Boy Advance, Famicom and Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega, Sega Game Gear, Game Boy Color, the original OG Game Boy, uh, what is this called, FCE Engine, Wonder Swan, game, it just keeps going. There are so many different consoles on here. So if we go to GBA, for instance, and come in here, we can see there's a list of just tons of games on here. I don't know how they get away with putting so many ROMs on this device. ROMs is the read-only memory of the game cartridge that actually has both the mapper and the game data on there that explains to the console how to play the game. But yeah, 
it's just amazing how many different games that this thing can emulate and how many ROMs it just comes with out of the box. So if we go over here to our favorites, we can see games that I've been playing like Castlevania, Symphony of the Night, Dino Crisis, Mega Man, Final Fantasy, the Alien vs. Predator arcade game, which I think that actually might be a good one to demo here. So when you boot it up an arcade game, it does the real arcade launch sequence just like it would be doing in the arcade. It's got all of its warnings and information about the company that made it, Capcom in this case, our character here. I think I'm going to be the Predator. When you're done playing a game, just press this little home button here and it'll bring you into the menu where you can choose to exit or save your state or resume the game or any of those other kind of features that you might want to do with your game thing. One of the features that's really awesome about this is save states. I mean, sure, most emulators have save states these days, but this device does it in a super nice way. As soon as you exit out of the game, if you power it off, it'll immediately save your state. When you boot the game, it won't boot your save state, it'll boot the game like normal, but just press the menu button, choose save state, and load your one from exactly when you turned it off, and you're exactly where you were before. Assisted cheating in games like Mega Man, being able to save out of band right before or in the middle of a boss fight, and starting and restarting until you get it right can definitely help you out. I got this thing because my son and I have been on a Game Boy kick lately. We got the original Wario Land for Game Boy and we beat that and we were just killing it. And I was looking at how expensive Game Boy games were on eBay for the real cartridges and then I just decided I was going to grab an emulator that we could play like this in a pocket style and have a lot of fun. And I've been playing PlayStation on this. I mean, there are games that you need to have the analog sticks for, but they're few and far between. Most of them you can get away with just using these shoulder buttons and then the D-pad to emulate one of the sticks, and it works great. For 2D games like Castlevania, there's just no need for the analog either. It just plays flawlessly. This is probably better experience playing Castlevania than it is on an actual PS1 in my opinion. And I've been playing this thing for like two hours at a time and almost draining the battery. The battery's about three hours max by my personal tests. I don't know what Amber Dick claims it to be, but I get about three hours of non-stop play time before this thing needs charged. It recharges in like under an hour, full charge, very nice. I dig that a lot. It's got brightness controls, it's got battery options, a lot of cool stuff in the stock operating system. But we're gonna explore Garlic OS in another video coming soon, but I just kinda wanted to show off a little intro to this game console that I've been playing the crap out of all of the time lately. And I just can't get over how much it looks like the Game Boy Pocket. Game Boy Pocket was what came out before Game Boy Color, but after the original DMG Game Boy. I got the clear shell version of the Double X because I love clear technology. But just look at the similarities between these two consoles. There's no doubt they drew inspiration from the pocket. When the game cartridge is out, it makes this sort of dip here in the back of the case. Very similar to the double X in where they put their shoulder buttons. Just a lot of subtle design cues that I think are very similar between these two. That's about where the similarities end between these two devices. The ancient Game Boy Pocket screen and its inability to have any kind of backlight. If you don't have it at exactly the right angle, you can't see it at all. As with the Ambernick, it's just a beautiful brand new modern IPS screen that you can see from any angle. So to keep showing you around the console a little bit here, on this side we've got our volume rocker. It doesn't work if you hold it. You have to tap it to adjust the volume up or down by a step. 
On this side, we've got a power button and then a hard reset button and two SD card slots. Now, I think that this is a kind of important note about the SD cards. Amber Nick is notorious for shipping junk cheap SD cards. So don't buy the more expensive version of this with the bigger card, even though you might get a few more ROMs. They're just weird ones you never heard of. Buy it with the cheap one and then spend that extra money on buying legit SD cards to replace it with. Just drag and drop the files right off of this onto your new SD card make sure it's formatted FAT32, or just update to Garlic OS on the new card and throw it in there and be done with it. You can have two cards, one for your ROM and then one for the operating system. So all of your games are on one, and you can kind of curate that a little bit. And then the other one has the actual hardware BIOS for how to run the console. You can just leave that in there all of the time. There are just so many different consoles on this thing. And sometimes I feel like it's easier to just go to the search feature and type in the name of the game that you want. In this case, we're going to do Outrun. Let's turn the volume up on this guy here. Step on beat, for sure. Get ready. There is another really popular small handheld console like this. It's called the MyU Mini. A lot of people love that thing. It's, it's pretty much this device, but smaller still. I have a hard time feeling like I could get down with that. I wear size small gloves, and this thing for prolonged play sessions, your hands start to get slightly cramped just a little bit. Not too bad, but a little bit. If this thing was smaller, I, there would be no way I think that you could comfortably play this thing for a long period of time. The problem with the Mayu Mini is they're having trouble getting stock in smaller IPS screens. And without a beautiful screen like this, the device having a cool form factor and being pocketable doesn't really matter. You can't have a beautiful screen, you can't have a beautiful modern experience. So they're making a new Mayu Mini Plus with a bigger screen that's about the same size as this. It's going to have stock issues just like the regular Mayu Mini is now. The first two drops have already immediately sold out on their AliExpress page. They ship from God knows where. I got this thing from Ambernick's official eBay site in three days. It's also on Amazon, and I've heard it comes in like three days as well. So if you're a US buyer, I would just say get it on Amazon or get it from eBay. Both the links are down in the description below. They are affiliate links that help support the channel. So if you're gonna grab one of these game consoles and love Zero Style, help a dude out and use my affiliate links. So I also want to quickly show when you're done with this, you can long hold the power button here on the side until the goodbye message shows up, tells you it's going to bed. The ZF Cup Size A is not a pouch that I really love. My gear is small. The smaller size pouch works better for me in the way that I carry. But oh my god, this thing is literally the exact dimensions of the RG35 double X. That's a terrible name. We're calling it the double X from now on. It is literally the exact footprint of the double X. It fits in here just perfectly. The pockets on the inside give it a layer of padding. With the Ranger eyes, yet another layer of padding. So I'm pretty safe and secure carrying this thing in this pouch. Now, this does fit in my cargo pocket. I can absolutely put it in there, but it is bulky and not something that I suggest doing all of the time. I carry this thing like a clutch when I want to play some games, throw it in my bag when I'm not using it, and it's ready to go when I need it. The Double X is an awesome game console, and I highly, highly suggest it. I'm going to be talking about it again on this channel soon, so watch out for it. Well, we got a triple threat pouch dump in the books this week. I am ready to go with whatever kind of nerdy situations I might find myself in. Hey, if you're gonna order from Data Crew and grab something like the Pocket Peak Reaper here, use my discount code. XERO15 gets you 15% off your entire order. No kickbacks to me, just kickbacks to you on a form of a discount. So yeah, it's just a little thanks from me to you for being here on my channel, because I appreciate you. Well, that is the Pouch Dump episode for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Are you hyped about the double X? I know I sure am. Are you a retro gamer? Comment down below your favorite retro game. I would love to hear it and we can talk about it. 
Hey, and if no one has told you today, you are a rad person who deserves love and praise just like everybody else in this world. Get out there today, do something nice, have some fun, and I'll see you in the next one. Later on.